on the Paralympic Games are a celebration of human strength, perseverance, and the power of sport to transcend barriers. Leveraging technology plays a pivotal role, and the event is often seen as a tech accelerator of certain innovations that eventually trickle down to the general public, helping better the lives of uh, people living with disabilities. To talk more about this, we can bring in France 24's Julia Seeger. Julia, great to see you. Now, the pub public is all always fascinated with these technological uh, innovations, if you will, uh, that allow these sporting successes, such as carbon blades and other aerodynamic prosthesis that benefit athletes with specific needs. That's right. And since the beginning, the very first edition of the Paralympics that happened in Rome in 1960, uh, since then, it really has indeed served as an accelerator of innovation because athletes are always trying to increase uh, their performance, their speed. So scientists are trying to uh, better the ergonomics, precision, comfort, and hence, uh, with time indeed, because those, uh, of course, this technology is at first very expensive, but with time, it does indeed trickle down. Now, on top of uh, the physical training that para-athletes have, they also have this uh, training to get used to the technology, and this mm. is actually huge to get acquainted with it. Uh, so they work hand in hand with orthoprosthetics uh, specialists who follow them closely, almost like coaches, and they make these very, very small little changes so that the prosthetics are going to be as seamless as possible. So it all started in Rome, as I said, in 1960. At the time, many people uh, who were competing were in a wheelchair, but in the 1980s, we started seeing the very first uh, competition prosthetics. And of course, there was a huge turning point point, at least here in France, during the very first Winter Paralympics that happened in Albertville in 1992, because a company by the name of Chablos decided to really put their mind to this and make better prosthetic for sports to then make it to then for it to trickle down into the general public. And then, of course, there was the carbon fiber blades that were developed, uh, of, of course, showcased by Oscar Pistorius, who was nicknamed the Blade Runner. And that was a huge tech turn. Why? Because uh, the energy of every step was actually changed into a propulsion. And more recently, the uh, latest innovation is the mechatronic uh, prosthesis. So here it's a mix of mechanical and electronic components. So thanks to technology, we can now, of course, analyze every sport gesture, we can scan the body with sensors, we can take the imprint of the athlete's uh, residual limb, model it, 3D print it. That means that you can actually test different material depending on the uh, athlete's feedback. So the impact of technology has been huge. Let it be, um, you know, 3D modeling, uh, twin technology, 3D printing. It has been huge in the way that we uh, model those prosthetics. Now, Julia, there have been innovations, of course, made to, as you were mentioning, racing blades and what have you, but also innovations in terms of uh, for blind and visually impaired athletes. That's right. So today, I don't know if you know this, but visually impaired swimmers are warned they're approaching the edge of the pool, as you can see here on those pictures, with the coaches that use pole to tap them on the head. Uh, so this is, and to avoid this really unpleasant gesture, they've developed this cap, uh, mainly uh, using 5G technology. It was developed by Samsung. And so so hence, now coaches can send a signal to the swimmer uh, to tell them when they're getting to the edge to know when exactly they have to turn. Uh, so that is giving a lot more, um, of course, a, a lot more uh, uh, freedom to the swimmer. Now, another smart technology linked to this uh, uh, revolves around cycling. It's a cycling helmet. It's linked also to 5G. It was developed by Vodafone, and it allows a visually impaired cyclists to receive real-time audio instruction and navigate the tracks. So Tristan Bagma that you just saw, here. He uh, usually cycles in tandem. He was able to race solo on a velodrome thanks to this bike. All of the sensors on the bike are giving him, are enabling him to map the velodrome and get all of this information to understand where the other riders are. Uh, so he's really developing a new sense, if you will, almost thanks to this technology. So of course, all of this is very high tech, uh, but there's also frugal innovation, which is no less exceptional. I'm going to give you another example, for instance, Hippolib. So this is a riding saddle that provides greater support for people with motor disability. But when you think about it in the general public, it's also going to help people who have more invisible disabilities like neurological disorders to now be able to horseback ride. I mean, these technologies are fantastic, but do questions over fairness ever arise? There are a lot of controversies, especially during the Rio Paralympic Games. Uh, many single-leg amputees were struggling to stay motivated because uh, double-leg amputees dominated the sport in such a way because the technology that they had was, uh, um, you know, really, uh, really interesting. Now, the real challenge is for the International Paralympic Committee to be able to make sure that there's no technological doping here. There's another problem 
problem is the fact that athletes don't have all access to the same cutting edge technology. Exactly, it depends on where you live. We where don't. you live, even though some athletes, because they're known internationally, they can also create, uh, you know, some sponsorship with other companies. But it's Indeed, you know, in the United States, some devices are made by NASA. Yeah. Here in France, it's Airbus uh, that has taken uh, more than 55 projects for uh, para-athletes. So that's a huge problem, too. So there's a problem with fairness. There's a problem of equity. But at the same time, that's actually what's driving yeah. the change for prosthetic for the general public. Thank you very much for that, Julia. Julia Seeger there.